got into vintage audio a year ago. But there's a lot of things he still doesn't know. So he started up a channel on YouTube, and here he is now. The Vintage Newbie. That's when I show the motherfucker that my asshole tastes like strawberries. Oh. Sorry, gang. I was just uh, recording some sick tracks for my new album. Welcome to another episode of The Vintage Newbie. Ba, ba, ba. Ah. In case you missed the last few seconds of the theme song. Today... I'm going to welcome you aboard if you're a returning viewer. If you're a new viewer, welcome. Don't forget to hit the dag dag the dag button and then comment down below. All right. We've made it through all the realistic gear that I have, and yet I'm still wearing the Radio Shack shirt. Why? Because I forgot that I filmed all the episodes. <sighs> so grab a cup of coffee. Because today we're going to be discussing a separate new piece of gear that I found on the side of the road. It is the TX0868 cassette player and eight track player and cassette recorder and are you ready for this eight track recorder what what's even more amazing is this little gem of brushed aluminum and wood veneer is made by sound design that's right i said sound design maker of mediocre stereo products up there with yorks with an x you know a brand is good when they misspell something uh what else audio vox which i mean i think we all had an audio vox car stereo or walkman or little boom box at some time it wasn't one of those, it was an Emerson. Knock, knock. Who's there? Emerson. Emerson who? Emerson, nice jugs you got, my man. So let's get into a review and breakdown and functions of the sound design TX0868. Is that what I said? I don't know. Let's put on our spectacles and take a look, shall we? Here we are at the front of the Sound Design TX0868 stereo cassette slash eight track record deck. This thing's pretty cool. Oh, there's a little Shopkin toy that my daughter gave me. You ain't taking a little face on it. They're food and they're cute. Ah, this was an 8-track that I was recording on. Um, let's see. I do not know the year that this thing was made. But I'm guessing sometime between 1970 and 1980. Alright, uh, let's get into the functions of this thing. On your tape deck side... You've got your record, your rewind, your fast forward, your play, your stop, eject, and your pause. And this has a soft eject. Nice and slow like that. Then you can load up your cassettes into it. Uh, the play, so on this one, <laughs> because I did find it on the side of a road at this uh, little kind of thrift store but it looked like just a step above a junkyard really um when i was kind of driving through middle of nowhere 
but a pop thing because you never know what you might find and this was what I did find I had some stuff on me so I put a cassette in and they also had cassettes and eight tracks there to listen to as well um, and it's it sounded muffled and weird and garbly both the cassette and the eight track but I was like ah, oh, maybe it's just belts maybe it's just dirty heads and uh, selling this thing for like I think 10 bucks or something like that and it had a bunch of stickers where it was like marked down from 30 to 20 to 15 like you can still see a little sticker residue right there um, but the meters were going which always loving bouncy needle meters um, and I did like a quick Google search on it saw like some videos one from this guy V Westlife who had also done one on another unique little radio that I have that little cassette deck up there um, and yeah it seemed like this could be and I saw that like the TX models were apparently sound designs high-end so I was like alright screw it oh and also <laughs> It came with a free blank cassette. That's right, the Laser brand. Remember those? No, but it's sealed. So we'll give it a shot and see how it sounds. But uh, yeah, so I recorded on a Type 2 fancy chromium tape and I think it sounded pretty good on that, but I'll let you decide. The 80s never sounded better. Uh, so you've got a counter up here, like most good cassette tip, 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 tip. like most good cassette decks do. Um, and you've got this like little kind of Knight Rider Cylon light that goes whenever you're playing, which I'll kick the volume down. So it could be right. Someone's playing, it kind of goes back and forth like that. But it also does it even faster when you're fast forwarding and rewinding. Um, this does have auto stop except for when you're fast forwarding or rewinding but when you are fast forwarding and rewinding and you get to the end of the tape it'll stop doing the little flutter thing so if you're kind of seeing it peripherally or whatever uh, and you look up and you see that the lights have stopped you'll be like oh yeah it stopped I gotta flip the tape now and I'm just kind of running my mouth while I run out the tape and it should be stopping in a couple of seconds Five, four, three, two, one. See, yeah, it stopped right there. So now you see, you can hit the stop button on it. You got microphone recorder inputs. You got headphones to listen to it. Um, you've got recording level to adjust the meter. So if you're recording it and it's going up into the red there, which means you'll be getting all sorts of distortion, you can adjust it down to where it's back in black, which you should always bet on according to Wesley Snipes. Mm. Um, moving right along to the right, you've got the eight track functions. Um, so whenever you have a tape in, you can select which tracks you're gonna listen to. Let's see, it pops up on there. Then you hit the program button. It'll switch to the next track and the next one. And the next one after that, you see you got your meters going, whenever it's going, and whenever you are recording, because this is a record function, the little light for a track and record will be lit up. If you're recording on a cassette side, then the cassette light will be lit up. Um, if you're using a chromium tape as opposed to a regular tape, you can push in the little button to select it, and it'll light up on there. And there's this, I don't know what NRC is, I'm guessing it's some kind of noise reduction control. Um, 
It doesn't have a Dolby symbol on it, but uh, it's probably something along those lines. Let's, uh, let's see for a sec. Yeah, it does kind of muffle it a little bit, which is, in my opinion, what noise reduction usually does. Um, you can fast forward it, you can repeat the tracks. Um, don't really know what these various things do. You can have it eject at the end of the tape. You can have it eject at the end of each track. Or like me, I just have it off, so it'll just loop through all the time. You can pause it when it's playing. And this is really cool. Not only is the cassette a soft eject, but so is the 8-track. And it just slowly spits it out for you. Which is cool, because my other 8-track that I have, not this one, but another one that we'll get to later, when you push it, it's like, and it pops out really abruptly and loudly. But this thing is also pretty quiet when it's just playing, too. Normally, 8-tracks have a pretty loud motor. This one, not so much. So that's cool. I like that. Um, now, as far as the record function goes, I don't know if it's just the tapes that I got because my other 8-track recorder that I got came with a couple of blank, realistic 8-tracks. And it might just be those tapes weren't all that good or it might just be eight track recording in general just sort of sucks um because th this thing plays you know store-bought eight tracks pretty well you know as well as those can be played because as cool as eight tracks may look and stuff it's it's kind of a shit sound <laughs> if i'm being honest um and but like store-bought ones are pretty good, but the two, because I have another one here too, then I just load it up with disco hits, got some BGs, got some ELO, got some ABBA, got some Commodores, because um, you can do like f four separate programs of music. So yeah, and that's how I broke it up into BGs on one, ABBA on the other, ELO, the Electric Light Orchestra on a third, and rounding out the tape, the Commodores. I did that on that one, but it sounded jacked up because I recorded it on a different one. Then this one, I recorded on this one, and it's still, it sounded kind of wavy, fluttery, I don't know. I cleaned the heads, um, adjusted the crosstalk which is like uh, dude atrex are a, <laughs> they're such a pain um i mean you, you can't rewind it so if you want to listen to another song again uh you would have to hit the program button to go to the next track for it to play out the end of it in order to get back to the beginning of another track it's because it's all like you know say this is the tape you'll have track one on the actual ribbon of tape track two track three and track four and the little head just moves down on each one to pick up that um it is not a very convenient especially as someone who grew up with cassettes and those were just super cool the 8-track is really awkward and clunky and stumbly. But they are cool as hell, and I love them, and I wish that recording them sounded better, because I'd want to just buy a bunch of blank 8-tracks and record all sorts of stuff on it. But so far, the two that I got did not sound all that great. But this thing plays well, definitely. Um, and with the cassette plays well records well i my favorite one that i talked about the other day was this sct 25 which sounds amazing for this cassette in here this chromium cassette side a i recorded on the sct 25 side b i did on this one right here and they both sounded really great i'm happy with it 
Uh, one. Whoops. Yeah, gotta eject it. So on a lot of more high-end 70s stereo equipment, you'll see like these big handles on the front. These have these little thin handles here, um, but it still is really cool and it's a nice bit of character that it adds to it. But it, there's also some function to it because the sides, the top, the bottom, and the back are all one solid piece. So when you unscrew it, to which you unscrew it by lifting up and uh, unscrewing screws on the bottom just to loosen everything but then you have no way to like really get it out well that's yeah. where these handles come in you can just you can either put the machine on its side and pull it out or even through the front and you just have one hand here one hand here and just slide it on out and it's uh it's pretty cool now the stuff on the inside is all kind of connected it's one piece and it's a little it's not the most stable setup, so just be careful because after I messed around with it the first time to clean the heads and everything and check the belts, when I put it back in, it, it did kind of jack up the meters and um, and the sound was like messed up. It would do a thing that I've just had common with a lot of tape functions where one needle would just get buried and be like sounding. So I got in there, I cleaned this stuff up. And the inside of this thing, oh my god, it was so filthy. There was fucking disgusting. There was like dead roaches in it, and it smelled like bug spray. Like I think someone just opened this up, sprayed some fucking bug spray in it. Uh, so I had to clean the hell out of it. Um, taking stuff out, wiping it down, getting in there with rubbing alcohol, um, yeah, it was pretty bad. Letting it just sit out in the sun to get clean that way. Um, yeah, it was it was pretty rough. It it took a couple of days to get this thing to where I felt somewhat safe being in the same room with it. But yeah, it looks cool. It sounds really great for sound design. Are you kidding me? Like this this is a brand that is generally kind of looked down upon. But this one, yeah, I'm, I'm digging it. I like it. It's, it's definitely a keeper. Um, again, checking on eBay for prices, both selling now and in the sold. They seem to go from anywhere between, I don't know, like 40 to $200. Um, so maybe people are kind of hip to these. Um, I remember posting in a stereo group about it and someone was like yeah these are definitely the high end of sound designs um so i guess maybe folks know about these already but i did not but now i do and now you do too so there you have it folks the sound design 0868 by sound design i'm a great spokesman spokesperson um sounds good looks cool it's gonna raise this up and fit it into the shot since it's the featured piece today there we go yeah um i am i'm quite happy with the purchase as long as i'm not inhaling remnants of toxic bug bug spray butt butt spray bug spray both kinds of sprays can be toxic as long as that's not going on i'm quite a fan of this thing and if you see one i'd recommend picking it up the belts were even in still pretty good shape they were a little loose uh but yeah they they sound quite nice um so i'd highly recommend picking one up if you see one don't be dissuaded by the sound design logo and that's it for now join us next time for another episode of this show hey gang quick follow-up on the sound design tx0868 cassette player eight track the fucking thing i was just talking about a few minutes ago 
Um, I know when I went through and was talking about the playback and recording on everything, and it seemed like there were some issues with the 8-track player as far as like recording and stuff goes. So it's been a few days, and I've actually gone through... Uh, re-recorded over one of the eight tracks that I did and then actually recorded on the other complete blank one. Look, super mega 70s hits. And the conclusion I came to was that it actually sounds really good recording on this thing, but you then have to play it on this one. If I play it on my other eight track recorder then it kind of sounds like the tracks are mixing and vice versa if i record on my other eight track recorder and play it on this one the same thing it, it, it sounds like the the different programs are bleeding into each other um, but whenever i play store-bought cassettes on either one they both sound fine so but the recording quality on the sound design is actually a bit better than my other recorder that we'll get to I don't know probably in like a week or two um, but that one's like really cool too but yeah the two just do not like each other they do not play well together as the kids say so in conclusion the sound design TX thing it's pretty freaking solid. I love it. It sounds great. It looks cool. Um, what did I say it was? Like 10 bucks or something? Like, yeah. Um, I'm happy with it. It's solid. I hope it stays functioning because that's one of the joys with this stuff is... And by joys, I mean... Uh, is that it can break at any moment and you have to know how to fix it or be able to pay someone who can and I am not someone who can pay someone who can and I'm barely able to fix it myself so fingies crossed but yeah you know what I give this thing an 8 out of 10 dead roaches uh, no I don't know I'll give it like an 8 8.5 9 I, I don't even know what my grading scale is but I like it I love it I can't get enough of it I listen to these two eight tracks that I made and and both of them are mixes of uh, what the first one was like Bee Gees, ABBA, ELO, Commodores just some good bangers from the 70s along with my other two eight tracks the eagles the long run and saturday night fever because you you just if you have an eight track player you have to have that album on eight track and one of my goals is to hopefully get star trek the motion picture on eight track because i have it on what vinyl have it on mp3 have it on cd so I need to get it on 8-track as well. Um, so that now fully definitely does conclude it for this episode. Uh, next, we'll maybe we'll move along to this stereo. I think I've covered everything here. Maybe we'll talk about speakers. Maybe we'll talk about some peripheral additional types of things that I have going on. I don't know. At the weekend to think it over. So, until then, gang, have a blessed day. Pepper.